Hi, welcome to Roy's Game Table. Today we start our series of five stocking stuffers for Christmas. So pull up a chair and let's look at game one. So Thanksgiving is over and for many of you, it's gonna be time to get out there and start looking for Christmas presents to give to your loved ones and friends or whoever. And uh, if you're like me, one of the traditions that you may have is that you like to try to find gifts that you can put in to stockings that will fit into stockings. And so I'm gonna to start today in this video, a series of videos showing off a game that I think would be a good choice to put into a stocking to give to someone you care about. Maybe, maybe there's someone in your family that enjoys playing games, enjoys the, the mental challenge of figuring out how to beat a game or just playing other people in the game. Maybe you're, you're trying to find something to play with your children, your teenagers or something. And so we're going to be looking at some games that, uh, that are small enough that can fit into a stocking and and I'm going to be doing a playthrough for each one of these five games. And so uh, you can decide for yourself whether or not it's something you think you want to purchase just to put into a stocking for someone that you love or care about. And one of the, each, each of these games can be played uh, by multiple people. But one of the things that's unique about each one of these five games is that they all can be played solo. Uh, so you may have someone in your family that just likes to play games more than other people and they don't really have anybody to play the game, play their games with, well, each one of the five games on that I'm gonna be showing in this series, again, they can be played solo, so if they have time um, and, and they have some time to kill and they wanna sit down and play a game, they can play it. Uh, sometimes people take small games, like the ones I'm gonna be showing in these videos, they take them on business trips to have something to do in the hotel uh, when, when they're, you know, at night before they go to bed, they don't want to watch TV or whatever. So they'll bring along a game and play it. You know, there are people who do that. So for whatever reason, these are going to be, uh, options that you can think about to put into the stockings of the people that you love and care about. And the first game we're going to be looking at is one deck dungeon by Asmodee games. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got everything set up and ready to go for the game. And to, we're going to be doing a campaign, starting a campaign today in this video, game one. And game one of the campaign and one deck dungeon is against the dragon, as you can see there. And uh, so we will be fighting him, but we got to go through three levels of the dungeon before we can descend down and fight him. And the three levels are going to be shown here. You can see, well, it's called floors, I guess. Floor one there at the top, floor two, and then floor three. Now, one thing you got to keep a note is you always want to look at these areas here, these long boxes. And as you can see where it says Hall of Statues, it says spend an extra five time before your first turn on each floor. So uh, uh, those hourglass symbols represent time. Well, how do we spend time? You spend time by simply discarding cards off of this dungeon deck. So, uh, Every time, we, so we're gonna be doing that three times in this game, uh, at the beginning of each, at the beginning of each one of the floors. Okay, and our our hero today is gonna be the paladin, and uh, as, you, as you can see, the heroic feat there. Roll any or all of your dice uh, stored here. Well, how do you roll? How do you store those dice? Store a heroic die here when you open a door with four plus experience that little symbol right there is the symbol for experience and then you may store up to two dice at a time so um, that'll make more sense when it happens what it means by uh, store up heroic dice here when you're open a door with four plus experience I'll show you that when it happens but then you see her one of her skills everything here at the bottom are skills so she gets one and it says for every two damage you would lose, prevent one damage, you cannot prevent damage otherwise. Now, I don't have to use this skill if I want to prevent damage in another way, but if I do use this skill to prevent damage, I can prevent two whenever, uh, every time I take two, I can prevent one, but then I can't prevent damage in another way. So that's what that one means. Now, over here on the side, when I roll against combat, I can get three blue dice. That's uh, kind of like magic. 
uh, one pink dice that's kind of like agility and three yellow dice kind of like um, fighting combat type things so that's the dice that she gets to keep and I can add more to the side here with loot and that's called items items go on this side of the card skills go down here and then if I want to get experience um, my experience I would put underneath this side of the card to show that I I'm getting experience and as you can see I need six experience to level up to level two start level one and I need six to get to level two um, and then there's also one more thing uh, if you can see it here there's a potion some some loot cards from the deck give you potions and uh, and I could I can take that as loot as well and when I do when I take a card that gives me a potion ability I also gain a potion with that card that I take so if that happens I'll show it to you but those are just some important things that you'll need to know all right so let's go ahead and start the game well as I said uh, with the dragon's cave you at the start of each floor you have to discard five five uh, times so one two three four five now at the start of each turn, you have to spend two time. No matter what you do, you gotta spend two time. So it's the start of my first turn, I've gotta spend two time. Okay, now I have the choice to either explore or enter a room. So if I wanna explore, I, I just take the top cards up here and I put four cards in front of me. If I wanna enter a room, I open a door, which basically just flip a card over, and then I can encounter whatever I see or I can flee from it. Or if there's a, a door that's already been opened, like if there's an encounter looking at me, I can go after that. And, and that'll make more sense too as I go through the game. But on this first turn, I'm gonna have to explore because I don't have any doors I can open. So I'll put doors out up to my limit of four. All right, and that is my first turn. So now I'm on my second turn and the start of every turn, I have to pay two times. So discard two cards. And it doesn't, and now I'm gonna have to open a door because um, I can't explore. I'm at my maximum of four doors. So I've got to open a door and it doesn't matter. I'll just open this one. Okay, so we have a locked door. Now, um, so uh, there's, this is a peril card. And so I have to choose whether to do this top one or whether to do the bottom one. I can either pick the lock, and if I do, I have to discard one card, spend one time, and then I roll my pink dice, or I can bash it open and uh, try to get 11. And of course, um, it's a little bit harder to do this one, but you don't lose any time for it. Now, how do you know whether or not you sh I should encounter this locked door or flee from it? And just leave it here. If I flee, I'll just leave it here and just sit here and then I spend two more time and then I can open up another door or something. Explore if I had no cards out. So it would just sit here until I decided to come back to it. Well, how do I know whether or not I want to attempt it? Well, um, one of the things I think is by these experience point uh, icons here. There's two of them. Two is kind of on the, they're not necessarily easy, but they're the easiest, I would say. Three is kind of medium, and four experience points means it's pretty pretty difficult. And so, you got to keep that in mind. But my paladin rolls three yellow dice. So, um, I think I am going to encounter this. Uh, because even if I lose, I, I, get, I take two wounds. If I can't cover up, if I can't get dice to add up to 11, then I'm going to take two wounds and I have to lose two cards. Uh, but I've got five health. I've got all my health. And if you remember her ability, whenever you take two damage, you prevent one. So I'd actually would only take one damage. So I'm just going to go ahead and encounter this. And so I'll get to roll three yellow dice for this. And also you got to look at these boxes here. Um, on this first floor, anytime I do a peril event, I've got to get a two to go here. And this green uh, symbol right here this armor symbol means you have to fill in these spots before you can fill in anything else. So if I'm not if I roll a, uh, if I'm not able to roll a two with what I roll, then I can't fill in any other boxes. So that's what the green means. You have to fill these in first. Now, if I was doing combat, which is the yellow swords, then I would need a, th this would come into play, and I would need a yellow sword that's a three or more to put here. 
or and if I don't, I take a wound. Okay, and by the way, I can do yellow or black. These are heroic dice. Uh, you saw the heroic feet earlier. These are the heroic dice, and uh, they're wild colors. They can stand in for any other color, and that is what um, that is what this symbol means. That that means the heroic dice symbol. Okay. Well, I'm going to encounter this. And I've got three yellow uh, dice that I can roll, and that's it. That's all I can roll. So this is going to be tough. I've got to get an 11 with this. And, uh, I, you know, I probably actually won't get this because I've got to put one here. So I'm going to, I have to get a six and a five or two sixes to be able to cover this. But in one deck dungeon, even if you fail, you still get to claim the loot. So I'm still going to either get to take two experience points. Oh, I totally forgot that before the game, um, I'm playing on standard in the campaign. That means you get to take, before the game, you get to take the top card of the dungeon deck and put it here as XP. And I totally forgot to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I, again, I should have done that at the beginning of the game before I discard any cards, but it's too late to kind of backtrack that. I'll just do it now. So I'm going to have three experience points uh, on here. Uh, sorry about that. But again, I'm just showing how the game works. So I could take, I, I'm gonna, I, I could fail this, but I could take it as a yellow sword, even if I fail, or I can take it for the skill where if I get, um, if I get up to a total of three pips on blue dice, it doesn't have to be a blue three, it could be a blue two and a blue one, but if I can get that, I get to roll a heroic dice, and that's pretty good, or I could take the two experience points, which would get me up to five out of six and get me closer to leveling up. Well, anyway, let's see what happens. I need to roll really good, though, to be able to beat this. All right, well, I got, I got exactly what I needed. I got a six, a five, and a two. So this two is going to go over here, and this six and five is an 11, and I do defeat it. I got very lucky on that roll, so don't take any damage. <clears throat> don't lose any time. And I can take this, and... Um, I can have a maximum of one item at level one or two skills. Uh, the yellow sword is good and the XP, but I think I am going to take this skill because I do roll three blue dice when I roll combat, and the three would let me roll a black. So I'm going to go ahead and take that <clears throat> as a skill. So I'll slide under here, and I'm done with that turn. So the next turn, I discard two cards. And I'm not, I could explore, but I'd only put one card out. It'd be kind of wasteful. So I'm going to open a door. I'll open this one. And it has three experience points. It's a flame statue. Um, okay, so I can either roll my blue dice or my pink dice. Well, I'm going to be doing blue here because um, I only roll one pink die. There's no way I'm going to be able to get that. Now, I could flee, but I'm not going to flee. There's really no reason to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and try to disenchant this. So I'm going to have to spend three time to do that. So one, two, three, and then I'm going to roll my blue dice. And if you remember, um, if I if I can't uh, get eight, I can use my skill here. Well, no, I can't. My skill that I got, Shimmer Blast, is only good in combat, the yellow uh, the yellow icon here, so I cannot use this right here. I've got to be able to just get it. I've got, to, I've got to be able to get everything with what I roll. Let's see if I get lucky again with my blue dice. All right, a four, a five, and a one. Well, I'm not quite as lucky this time. Uh, I have to cover this two, so I'll cover it with the four, but then the five and the one I have is only going to give me a six out of eight, so I will not fail that, but again, I do still uh, get this as loot, but I've got to take the penalty now. So I take two damage, but because of her ability, reduce it by one. So I take one damage, and then I got to lose three time. So I got to discard three cards, and that's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. And I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take the three experience points so I can go ahead and level up. So I'm going to do that. Now, when you level up, these cards go back into the box. So they're gone, they're out of the game, and I'll move to level two. And the nice thing about level two is now I have, I can get three items, three skills. I get a potion for coming to level two. So now I have two potions and I get to roll one uh, black die with every encounter, no matter what. So that's good. And that'll help me. All right, let's go to the next turn. Discard two cards and the door will be a phantom. Now it has four 
experience icon is there and this triggers her ability. So it doesn't matter. Her ability, her heroic feat has nothing to do with the experience she has over here by the card. It has to do with the cards you turn over. And I turned over one with four, so she gets to store a black die on her card. Now, uh, now I can decide to go after him or to flee. And uh, it's a pretty tough one, and you need combat and pink, the dexterity. And she only rolls one pink die. So it's very likely she won't be able to do this. I think it's kind of early for her. I think I will flee from this. So I'm just going to leave him here and that's going to end my turn. So I'll discard two cards at the start of a new turn. And let's see what we got here. It is a shadow. Okay. So he has a fade ability. Spend time for each skill you use. He also needs, uh, I have to get 10 pips worth of pink dice. So I have to put it here for this green. If I can't get 10 pips worth of pink dice, then I can't fill in any, any other spots. But if I succeed, I can either take three experience points, I can get this, which means I get a yellow sword and an extra hit point, or I can take it as a potion where I can change two of my non-heroic dice to be sixes, which, and that's good. I know the dragon's gonna require some sixes, so that's good. Uh, do I want to fight this shadow though? Cause that's going to be tough getting the pink. You know what? I'm going to go for it. That's what we're here to see and what we're here to do. I'll just go for it. If I, I have to spend a time if I use any of my skills. So I got to keep that in mind, but I'm going to go for it. So I will roll my heroic dice that I got stored and you always roll those four first. And that's a terrible roll of one. So I hope I get better with the other one. So three yellow, uh, one pink, three blue, and then my level two lets me roll a black. So I get some more dice, hopefully can help me. Oh, and by the way, I can put this black one towards this skill over here to roll another black if I want, because again, it can be a blue. So let me see what we get. Okay, so um, that's what I have here. And remember, I've got to get 10, 10 worth of pink and before I can fill in anything else. And uh, right now I've only with the black dice and the pink dice, I can only get up to seven. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, I will use my skill over here. So I'm going to use this blue three to do that. And because of the fade ability, I have to spend the time, but it lets me roll a black die. Let's hope I get a good roll here. A six. Very good. So, I'm going to use that six to, uh, let's see, I want to be able to cover these as well. So um, now one of the things you can do is you can trade in two dice to get one black die. I think it doesn't matter what the color is, just two dice. So I may end up doing that. Um, but before I make that decision, let's just see what I have. Uh, let's see, I got a six, a three, and a one to make 10 over here on the pink. So I got the shield covered that has to be covered. And then I've got a blue three that can go here to cover that spot. Um, a blue four can cover that spot. And then I have, do have a yellow three that can come over here and cover that. And I've been looking at it and I think that's probably the best I can do. So I'll just stop right there. So I'm gonna take two damage and two time, but remember for her ability, I prevent one damage. So I'll only take one damage, but I did use a skill. So I have to spend a time and then the other penalty is to take two time from these spots here. So I got to spend two more time and I get this card. So I can either take it as a potion, which would be really good, or I can take it for the experience or for this over here. And even though the potion is tempting, um, I really want to get some extra hit points and uh, I'd like to get some more dice to roll. So I'm going to take this as an item. So I'll slide in under here. And now, as you can see, I've got four yellow dice and now I've got six hit points and we're moving in the next turn. So I'll spend two and I could come back and fight him, but I don't think I want to. I'm going to explore. So I'm going to put three out and that's going to be it for that turn. So now the next turn, spend two and I'll just encounter, open a door. I'll open this one. And we've got another four, so that 
gives me a black die and it's an ogre. And ogres are, I mean, this is going to be tough. Take, I can take a lot of damage here if I'm not careful. But he gives me a blue and more um, hit points. And then the ability is always going. You can always use this ability. And you discard any number of value five dice to gain that many six uh, combat dice, six yellow dice. So uh, I can I can encounter him or I can flee. And uh, you know, I've got the hit points and you can use these potions over here. The potion ability is at the start of your turn, you can use it to heal three damage or you can use it any time to heal two. So I've got a couple of potions. I think I am gonna take him on. So. Uh, I, I'm going to use the heroic dice I got. Go ahead and roll that up. And it's a three. And then I get to roll four yellow, uh, one pink, three blue, and then I get a black for being level two. So let me roll those up. Okay. Uh, a lot of ones again. So I got three ones, a couple of threes, got a lot of low rolls here. Okay, the ones and twos aren't going to do me a whole lot of good. So I'm going to trade in this two and this one. Let me show you here. I'm going to trade in this two and this one. Uh, when you do that, you take the lower value. I'm going to trade it in for a black one. And I'm going to use a black one. I'm going to use this black one and this blue three to give me three dice and let me roll an encounter, or let me roll a heroic die, and it's a four. All right, well, let's see what we can do with what I rolled. Um, this yellow six can cover up this six here, so I'll do that. Uh, the black four, I'll just put here on this pink four to save me some time, because she can take damage, because she can prevent it. So I'm not real worried about taking a whole lot of damage. If I can prevent time, that's what I want to do more than anything. But anyway, let's see, I've got a five that can go here, and then um, a yellow three that can go over here, because remember, you gotta think about these spots over here. So I'll put that spot, put that there. And I got, a, let's see, I got two threes and a four that I really can't do anything with because um, I don't have anything that take, that needs blue. And I could, if I, I could put these two, this four and this three together to get a black three, but it's not gonna help me. Um, although I could, well, I think I will do that. I'm gonna put these this four and this three together to get a black three. And then instead of putting the six on this six, I'm gonna put it here on the nine. Um, or no, I'm going to put it on the 12. I'm going to put the six there and put these two threes. So I got six and six is 12 to cover up the big hit there. Uh, so that's not so bad, I guess. I'm supposed to take four damage, but she'll prevent two of it because of her ability. So I'll just take two damage. I'm at four hit points out of, out of six. And then I only lose one time for this. Okay. So now I get to claim it as loot. And, um, you know, that is a good ability here. Discarding number of value five dice, scan that many. But if you don't roll any fives, it's not going to do any good. I really would like to have the extra hit point. So I'm going to take this as an item as well. I get up to three items at level two. So I'm going to take this as an item. And so now I've got uh, five, six, seven hit points. And, um... Four blue dice and four yellow dice. I need to get some more pink dice, but now I'm at four out of seven. Uh, so at the start of my turn, I have two uh, potions here. I'm going to spend one of them to heal three just to get, you know, just to be safe. So now she's only got one wound on her and we will discard two cards and I'll encounter this card here. And it is a skeleton. So I can get another um, potion and uh this potion, this is a pretty good one. You spend that potion, you spend two time before an encounter and skip straight to the claim loot phase. You don't have to fight anything. You don't have to worry about the, like, this ability here, which tells you to discard all ones and threes rolled. I could go against this phantom, I skip straight, straight to the loot and get the four experience if I wanted it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight the skeleton. So, four yellow. And uh, one pink, which only needs one pink, so that's good. And then four blue. 
and one black. All right, and I do have some abilities I can use. So let's see what I roll. All right, a couple of ones again. Uh, in fact, I rolled a one on the pink. But I did get a six and I get six and I get a yellow one. So, um, well, I've got to fill in this two and this four before I can do anything else. I can't fill anything else. So I do have a blue four that can go here and I do have this blue three. I'll just put it here. So I've got that taken care of. Okay, and then I'll take the yellow six to cover up these this spot here that has the two time penalty. Uh, I'm gonna take a yellow five to cover up this five. I'm gonna use my black six to cover up the pink five that's right here in the middle. So I need a three, a yellow, two yellow threes, um, which I can get one. I can get one one of those and I could try to change it trade in for my ability here and I just realized that I I nudged the pink when I was moving one of my other dice that's not a four that should be a one I don't know how that happened I hope I haven't been doing that too much I think I did it earlier but I think I've caught it if I've knocked one and made a dice higher I'm sorry about that uh, but that pink should definitely be a one and actually looking at it uh, I can I had this blue five, but it's not gonna do me any good. I need yellow threes. And if I trade in a five, whatever I traded in would have to be the lower value. So I'd only get a two or a one. So I actually think I'm gonna put this five over here and roll a black die. And let's see, I get a six, I get a black six. So I'm gonna use that to cover the time. So I don't lose any more time. And that'll do it. I will take a damage for this spot over here. But now I get this card, and as much as I like, as much as I would like to get more pink dice, I'm going to take it as a potion so that I can use this ability. So what? it's just like with anything else, you just slide in under. And now I've got another potion, and when you identify a potion, as they call it, you get a potion right away. So now I've got two potions. Okay, so I'm going to spend two time, and I'm going to come back here to this phantom and I'm going to spend a potion I'm going to spend this potion and two time to go ahead and get this phantom now I could go ahead and take it for four experience points right now if I wanted to uh, but if you use it as an item or as a skill uh, later on you can always switch it out I can put something in its place and then put it over so I think that's what I might do. I think I'm going to take this, and this is a good ability where I can always roll a, a heroic dice, but it would only be, the, in this case, against perils. Um, I'd rather have it as a combat, so I think I'm going to take it as a third item so that I can get another hit point and another yellow die. So that's what I'm going to do for now. So there's another hit point. So I'm at five, six, seven, eight hit points, and I've got uh, five yellow dice. And the stairs have been uncovered. So, while visible, place a damage token here for each time spent, which I haven't spent any time yet because I had just enough cards a second ago. Each time there are three tokens here, place one on a hero or move the other two. And at the end of any turn, the hero is made to send. If this card is revealed while spending time to start a turn, the hero is made to send immediately. So, I have the option right now to descend and go to the next floor, and I'll never get to see what this is shuffle up the deck and go to floor two or I can put I can put two wounds on here to see what this is and encounter it but I'm going to go ahead and descend so it would have been a plague rat so now I'll shuffle this up and I'm going to move this down to show that I'm going to floor two and now uh, whenever I do any encounter that's a combat I gotta have a yellow three and a blue five any any kind of um, peril I have to have a green, I have to have a, a two of any color that has to be filled in first. And then I would need also a six uh, if I want to not take that damage. So, uh, so let me shuffle the deck and then we'll go to floor two. Okay, and so at the start of every floor, we have to discard five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. And then it's my next turn. So I discard two cards. I'm obviously going to explore because there's nothing to open yet. So that's the end of that turn. And now 
discard two cards and start my next turn. And I'll open a door, I'll open this one, and it's going to be a spiked log. Okay, so I can either try to clobber the log, spend two time and get eight with a yellow, or get a 14, excuse excuse me, get a 14. Well, uh, I only roll one pink dice. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to be doing, I am going to encounter this, but I'm going to be doing the top one. So I have to spend two time to be able to do this. And remember on this peril, I've got to get a two. And if I don't want to take this damage, I've also got to get a six, but I'm rolling five yellow dice. Okay. And then also a black die. And yes, again, on perils, if you, you only roll, the, if like if I choose the top, I only roll yellow or black if it let, lets me. And down here, I would only roll pink. So those are the dice I get to roll. I don't get to use my ability, my uh, Shimmer Blast ability here, because it's only for combat. I can use my armor though, if I need it. And I might, I see a lot of low numbers, although I did get a black five. I don't know, maybe it's not too bad. I didn't get a six. So I'm gonna be taking at least one damage here. Um, because I can't turn, I can't roll another black dice, but I do have a two to cover up that, that has to be covered. So that's good. And now I only need eight and I've got plenty. I've got nine, you know, ten, I got plenty of dice for that. So I didn't get a six. I will take the damage from this one. So I'm at three, took three wounds, but I get it. And, uh, now, uh, I can either take it where I can spend a yellow die to increase up to four of my dice by one each during combat, or I can get another pink die, but I'm at my limit on items. So I, I could get rid of an item, like I said earlier, uh, to, uh, to get this pink, and I think I might do that. And I know that this one here was a four XP, so even though I'm gonna be losing a hit point, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put this four XP over here, I'm halfway, to level three now, and then I'll put this pink in. So I, again, I do lose a hit point, but I do pick up another pink die, and I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hit points, and I've only got three wounds. I'm still good. Pretty happy with how that is. So we will move on to my next turn. All right, discard two cards. I'll open this door. Okay, it's a force wall, and we get four of these, so I get, an, I get a heroic die to store on her. And uh, I can either encounter this or run or whatever. I think I am going to encounter it. And I'm going to go try to blast through it. I need 14 on blue. I may not be able to get it, but her ability will, will be able to prevent some damage. And I really like this card. I can go ahead and get to level three if I want to <clears throat> or take something else. And I probably take it as experience or I could use my potion right now to go straight to that. Um, and it's just spend two time. But the thing is, if I do this 14 and fail, I spend two time anyway. So I'm going to hold on to my potion for something else. Let's just roll. I will use my black die, my heroic feet. You roll those first and I get a one. I seem to be rolling those on the heroic feet. Okay. So I get four blue and then I do get a black to, uh, add on cause I'm at level two. So let's see if I can get something better. Let's see if I can roll well here. Okay, so I get a one, a two, four, four, and five. Well, I didn't get a six again, so I'm not gonna be able to prevent this damage. I do have a two, and let's see if I have enough for 14. I got five, and four is nine, and four is 13. Yep, 14, 15. Yes, I have enough. 9, 4, 13, 14, 15. I only needed 14. So I, I pass. I, don't only I only take the one damage from here. That's good. So I'm like 4 out of 7. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it as experience so I can go ahead and level it up to level 3. So these cards will go away. And I am level 3. And when you get to level 3, you um, get a potion. And now I can have five items, so I can keep going this way. I can have four skills, and I now I need 10 experience to get to level four. But I think I'm doing pretty good so well, so so far. All right, spend two time and start my turn. I'll encounter this, and it is the clobber logs again that we saw earlier. It's got a different ability though here. 
I can get four. If I do four blue, I can gain a yellow four, pink four, and then increase one of my dice by one, or I can get another pink die. So let's encounter this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna clobber the logs. So spend two time. And I'll roll my yellow, which is four this four now, plus the one black from my level three. And that's all I get, I need an eight. So let's see if I can get an eight. Oh wow, I did terrible, terrible roll. I'm, I'm, we'll see, I definitely don't have a six. I do have the two that goes here and I do have enough for eight. Three, six, nine, ten. So once again, I take the damage from that, but that's okay. So, I'm, but I gotta be careful. I'm at five out of seven. I may need to heal, but I get this, and uh, I think I'm gonna take this as a as an item because I'd like to get more pink dice to catch up with my blue and my yellow. So I'll do that. So now I can roll three pink dice in combat or against a pink peril. Got one more door and I do want to explore it, but at the start of my turn, I think I will spend a potion to heal three so that I just be safe. All right, so let's spend the two turn, the two uh, time. And this is going to be a goblin. All right, now this goblin ability here, you spend a pink, prevent one damage, and a boss fight, prevent two. Uh, normally that's really good, but if you remember from her armor, if I use the armor for every two you would lose, prevent one, you cannot prevent damage otherwise. If I use her armor, I would not be able to use this. But I could, let's say I only take one damage. I could use this ability to prevent that one damage and choose not to use the armor. But I am gonna fight this goblin, and if I take him, I'm not gonna take him as this skill probably. But I just wanted to tell you that. So, uh, I roll four yellow. And then three pink now, and four blue. Okay, and then also don't forget a black. So I'm getting more and more dice to roll. That's why it's good to get items because it gives you more dice you can roll. And uh, let's see what I have. Um, all right, I've got to cover this spot. The X means it's the swarm ability It's four you need a four per, per open door, including this one. Well, it's the only open door, so I need to get a four here for this yellow. And I have that, I have it in these two yellows, so I'll just put them there. And then uh, I have a yellow three that I can cover this. I have a pink five I'll use to cover this one. Here, I have a yellow six to cover up this five that would make me take two damage. I have a black four. Okay, this is looking pretty good so far. I have a blue six that can come over here. So now I just need a yellow three. And uh, I don't have a yellow, but I will turn in this five and this three to get a black three. And that's gonna be able to cover this. And so I do it. And I'm gonna take him. Now I've got four items. I have a max of five, or I could take the skill, but I've already told you I'm not gonna take the skill. I'm gonna take the item. And if I, get another item or get another card that I like the item better. Remember, I can always switch that out, but now I'm rolling five yellow dice again. Okay, I'm gonna have to explore this time. So, put out four cards. All right, and that's my turn. So I explored, now the next turn, uh, I'll encounter this card. Okay, it's got four experience so i get to store heroic dice it's an ice elemental before the encounter spend uh, those three now here's the thing um i can use my potion and from what i understand from the rules if i use my potion and, and the faq that i've seen online if i use my potion i spend the two time but i don't have to spend the three time for this frost uh, ability here. Before the encounter, spend three dice, and this potion says spend two before the encounter. This would come before that, I would not have to do it. And I think I, I think I will, I think I will go ahead, I think, and use this potion to uh, bypass everything, go straight to the loot, so I gotta spend two time. And then I get this, and I'm going to take this as an item. I could take the re-roll one of your dice or increase one of your dice by one. 
And that is pretty good though for combat or peril. Um, I think I actually will take that as a skill. And skills are just like items. Um, if I get another skill that I like better, I can always uh, replace that and put it for four uh, experience there. But I'm going to take that as a skill. So now I can re-roll re a die or increase one die by one. Okay, so let's go to my next turn. And we'll do this door. Okay, it's a locked door. I need an eight in pink or 11 in yellow. I'm going to encounter this and take the uh, eight or take the 11 yellow. So I'm just going to roll my five combat dice. One, two, three, four, five. I get five yellow dice and a black die. I'm going to save this one for something else because I don't think I need it here. I'm not real worried about the, the penalties. So I'll roll those. Okay, and again, I didn't get a six, so I won't be covering that. But, well, I could. I could because I can use my Lucky Familiar ability on perils. So I could make this five a six. Well, let's see what I have. I've got a three to cover the two. And then um, I have four, eight, and three is 11, 12. Yes, I do. I do have enough to cover that, so I will use my um, increase one of your die by one to make this a six. And this six, any, any color can cover that, so I'm going to cover that. And so once again, I do it. I complete that task without taking any damage or losing any time. And uh, I've already got five items. I'm pretty happy with what I have over here. I don't really necessarily want this as a skill, although three pink, well, I only roll three pink. Uh, you can use black, but I think we're just going to take this as experience. Start trying to level up to get to level four. Okay, so we are on what's probably going to be my last time because here are the stairs. Now, I could immediately descend, but I think I've spent the two time. I'm going to see what this is. It's a plague rat. I'm not really worried about that. I will go ahead and counter this plague rat. So uh, he, he has a swarm ability also. I need to get a four in this pink spot before I can do anything else. All right, I'm not gonna use my heroic die. Uh, so I roll five yellow from over here. I got three pink now. I get four blue and I get one black. So I should be able to do this one just like the other one. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, rolled a couple of ones again, but I do see a couple of fives. I think I'm all right. Uh, I need a four, a pink four, and here's my pink four. So I'll put that there. Um, I've got a pink three that I got that rolled over here. I'm going to put that there. Let's see. Um, I got a blue five for over here. I'll use a yellow five right here. Um, cause I don't want to get time on here. If I put time, it's going to go as wounds and I gotta be careful because if I ever have to put three wounds on here, she'll take a wound. So I don't want that to happen. I do have this black three that can go here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this five, use this ability here to turn this five into a six. And then I'm going to turn in the two sixes here. Uh, I don't remember what that is, but I won't use it. I knocked another die. But I'm going to turn these two sixes into a six to cover up that pink. And then, um, so I don't have a three to go here, unfortunately. So I could, um, I need a yellow three. I've got a blue five. I'm going to turn in this blue five here to roll a black. And let's see if I can't roll a, let's see if I can't roll a three. Yep, I got a black five, that'll work. So I'll do that and I covered everything. Had to use my abilities and everything, but I got it. That works. Um, I could gain this as an ability that I can use in combat or peril to turn in two blues to get a blue five. And that does actually seem pretty good. I think I will do that. Cause I still have, I can get four skills. So now I have three skills and five items and I'm gonna descend down to floor three. So this is gonna be my last floor and I wanna be able to level up to level four because 
Level four gives you two black dice. I want to get that. But let me shuffle up the dungeon deck and then I'll move to my next turn. Okay, so the start of a new floor, you have to discard five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the start of the turn, discard two. And I'm obviously exploring, so let's put those out. And that's the end of that turn. So I'm going to open a door. So start of the turn, two cards. And I'll look at this one. And it is a bandit. And he has the dodge ability, so in order to make a heroic dice out of, out of dice i have to spend three instead of just two um, but i'm going to encounter him there's no reason to flee i think i will actually use my heroic die against him though because i have to get pink and that's what she's the weakest at so my heroic die let me go ahead and roll that and it's a five all right i get uh four five yellow and then three pink uh, four blue and a black. Okay, so let's roll those up. And I've got a new thing over here. I've got to get 10, wor 10 pips worth of a yellow over here, technically before I can fill in anything else. All right, so let's see what I roll up. And I see a lot of fives. That's good. So um, I do need 10 here. It needs to be yellow. So let's see, I've got a five yellow, five, and four is nine, one is 10. So I've got that covered that has to be covered. And then I have a blue five to cover this blue five over here. And nothing else requires a blue. So this was a five here. And so I'm gonna use this five to, well, no, that was a five, I'm gonna use this four over here to let me roll a um to let me roll a black die okay it's a one all right well i'm going to use that black one and this blue one and turn those into a blue five just so i can have it i mean again i don't have anything that needs a, a five but i can always turn these in to get something else that i might need so uh that i might be able to use so i'll do that uh, I do need an eight in pink, so let's do the five and the four. So I got that one covered. And I have a black five that can go there, a black five that can go there. I'm not gonna be able to get everything. I'm gonna take some damage, it looks like. But I do wanna be able to cover this four. So I will turn in these two blue fives. All right, everyone, future Roy here. I just want to say something. Uh, the bandit ability requires that you turn in three dice to get a black die. So I can't just turn in the two blue fives. So what I could have done here is used my lucky familiar ability to increase that yellow two to a yellow three and turn the yellow three in with the two blue fives to get a black three. Then I could have put the black three with that pink five there to cover up that eight spot and use that four pink to cover up the four that I need. And ultimately, that would have mean she would have taken two damage, but with her ability, she would have prevented one of that. So she would have only taken one damage. And as you'll see, uh, I end up taking one damage anyway. So the reason why I'm telling you this is even though I make this mistake, the outcome ultimately is going to be exactly the same. And I'm sure I'm just telling you how that could have happened. So I hope this makes sense. So let's move on for a black heroic five and put that here over this um, time. So I don't lose any time. I take two damage, but because of my ability, oh, I can increase one. I can increase a die still by one. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to use this potion to do that. So I'm going to increase this two to a three. And uh, so now I only take one damage. I was only going to take one anyway. And I get the card. So that wasn't too bad. It worked out uh, pretty well, I think. And um, so I can take it as, as I, I don't have any more room for items. If I want to take an item, I'll have to take something out. Or I could take it as a skill, which I can use a yellow to increase four dice by one. I think I will take it as a skill. So now I'm maxed out on skills and items. From here on out, I'm going to need to get XP or something. That's okay. That's good. So one, 
to this one is going to be a four. It, get, it has a four, so I get to store heroic dice, and it is a fire elemental, and these guys are tough. Uh, but I think I do want to go ahead and encounter him uh, because it will let me either get four experience or another hit point. So I will encounter him. And before the encounter, I have to place one damage. So I'm at four out of seven on my hit points. And I will use my heroic die that I got against him. And it's a two. Okay, so I'm going to roll uh, again five yellow. Let's see, that's four, five, three pink, and four blue, and um, one black. Okay, let's see if I can, let's see what I can do here. Hopefully I roll, hopefully I roll well, because these are, this fire elemental is tough. Okay, that was a two. And let's see, I got a black six. That was a three, it just accidentally turned it over. Okay, so I do have, I need to get 10 yellow, and I've got that with a six and a four, so we're good there. And then I need 10 worth of blue to keep from taking two damage and a time, so I'll put these two blue fives here. Um, and then I need a blue six, I'll put the, uh, you know, the black six to cover that, I think. I need a pink six, so I'm going to use this ability here to increase one of my die by one and take this five and make it a six. <clears throat> I need a blue three and a pink three. I've got a pink three. I got a blue three. This is looking good. I need a blue five and a and a yellow three. Um, well, let's use this blue two to turn this in over here and to get a blue five so we can cover this spot. And now I just need a yellow three and I've got it. All right, very good, <clears throat> rolled well. I think that's right. I think I did that right, so I don't take any damage or any, anything from him. And I would like to take the experience, but uh, he'll give me another hit point. Um, so I'm gonna switch out one of these items. Let's see, one of these pink items, uh, one of them, is a three. Let's see, one to three, they're both three. So I'll just take that one out and I'll put the fire elemental in its place. So let me take care of that. Okay, and so I've got it right here. I've got, now I have eight hit points at four out of eight and I've got five out of 10 to get to level four. Okay, let's keep going down the dungeon and I'll see what's behind this door. And it is a wraith. So before this encounter, convert one item to XP uh, I don't really want to do that. I like to keep my items. I'm going to flee from that. I don't want to give up XP just yet. Uh, maybe I can get to that without having to lose what I have. So, so I'm going to flee. That's my turn. So I discard two cards and I'll open this door. And it's a four. It gives me a heroic die. And I can climb around it or blast through it. And that's good. A four, It would. let's say I got five, it would get close to giving me um, the XP I needed, but it's also a yellow combat with a, uh, heart I could put over here, switch out, or I could switch out something here. I'm just going to blast through it and try to get a blue 14. So I will use my heroic die that came with it. Good. It rolled a five because I have to have a five to do anything else now. And I roll four blue dice and one more black because of level three. So let's roll good here. Okay, pretty good. There is a one and a two, but I do have uh, some fives. So uh, this blue five I'll put over here. The blue two I'll put here. And let's see, uh, I could cover that six, but let's see I have 11 and three is 14. So I have what I need right now. I would only take one damage. But I can, um, I can use Lucky Familiar and Flame Weave in this right here. And I think I'll, I think I'll re-roll this one because if I can get uh, something better, I might be able to cover everything. So let's roll that and it's a five. Okay, so that's good. Um, 
So I rolled a five, so I, let's see, 10 and three is uh, only 13, but I do have flame weave that I can use to get a five, and I will, I'll use the, I'll spend this blue three over here to get a blue five, because I can use flame weave in perils. So that's gonna give me the 15 that I, the 14 that I need here is actually 15, and that was a six. So that's gonna go here. Okay, so good, I covered up. I was able to cover up everything. So I'm gonna take this ability, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it as an item. I'm gonna take out this yellow sword here, and it's only gonna give me two experience points, but um, I, want to I want to keep the force wall for the item, not only for the yellow combat sword, but it gets to another hit point. So I'm gonna do that. So I've got five uh, items again, and I, I'm gonna spend two, but I don't wanna face that wraith. I don't wanna to have to convert something to XP. I like what I have over here. So I'm gonna explore, put out three new cards. I'm getting close to the end. I need to level up. Let's see, I got three, four, five, I got seven over here. All right, let's see if I can do it. This one. And it is a, a cave-in. So I can do the yellow or the pink. And um, I don't wanna spend any more time. I wanna get close to level up. I wanna get these, this experience. So I'm just gonna risk it and take the pink, I think, so that I don't have to lose as much time. So I need, I need 11 on that and I'm only going to get to roll three pink and one black so this, this is going to be hard I don't think I'll be able to do it but that's okay we'll see what happens uh well two a six a four a two and a four I definitely I have to have a two and I have to have a five so I will I'll use my um lucky familiar ability to increase the die by one make this four a five to cover this and then I've only got 10 unfortunately out of 11 don't have quite enough uh, but I could use this four to cover up to use my flame weave which I can use against perils to give me a blue five but I don't need a blue five I need pink oh that's unfortunate that's the only thing that I so there's nothing else I can do. I'm not gonna be able to cover this. I might as well use this six to cover this six over here. The four is not gonna do anything. Um, so I'm gonna take, instead of two damage, I'm only gonna take one and I will lose two time anyway. Uh, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take this as experience. And now I need one more experience point to get to level four. And um, I'm going to have whatever I get here is probably what I'm going to use because I want to get a potion to heal up some. And this is going to be it. So I got two cards left. I'll discard those. I'll see what's behind here. It's an ice elemental. It's going to give me, it's going to give me a heroic die. And that is unfortunate because before the encounter, I have to spend three time. If you put three wounds here, you take a wound. And I don't want to have to take any more wounds than I need. So I could back out, <clears throat> spend two time and encounter this and hope that this is a better option. And um, I think I am gonna do that. I am gonna take, I'm, I'm gonna flee from him, spend two time here. And if this takes one more wound, then that I take them all off and she takes a wound. But I'm gonna spend the two time to see what this is. Oh, it's a goblin, much better. Now I do need, it's four per open door on this, this one here. So I need a 4, 8, 12 for this. And I need a 10 for that. So that's actually gonna be pretty rough, but I'm gonna go ahead and encounter it. I think I can still do it. I will use my heroic die that I got. So let's roll that up. It's a six. All right, very good. And then she gets five yellow, um, three pink, uh, four blue, and one black to roll <clears throat> against this goblin. I'm gonna move these out of the way because I won't be encountering them. And uh, let's see what I get. Okay. Well, I already don't like what I rolled on these blues. I'm gonna take this 
blue one and the blue two and use it to cover, or I'm gonna take just the blue two and use it to cover this so I can get a blue five. And that blue five I'll use to cover this spot right here. I know I have to fill in these green first, but I'm just looking to see what I have. Um, I see I need a 12, a yellow 12 for this. So I'll use my six. Well, let's see what I've got. Uh, four, eight, and three is 11. Okay, uh, before I try to see all my yellow dice, I'm gonna go ahead and spend these two blue and this one blue to get three to be able to roll a heroic die. And it was a three, okay? Um, and then I, I've got two more abilities. I can re-roll one or increase one by, increase a die by one. I can also increase a bunch of dies by one. So I need a 12 here. Okay, I'm gonna spend this yellow over here to increase up to four dice by one. I'm gonna make this five yellow, a six yellow. So that's one. This is gonna be a five, four to a five, that's two. This will go from four to five, that's three. And this will go from three to four, I think. <clears throat> and, um, and then I'm gonna use my lucky familiar to increase one to increase one of my die by one, I'll increase one of these yellow fives to a six. So now I have two yellow sixes and that 12 will go there. So I'll take care of that. And then I need a 10 for that. So I'll do my black five and yellow five to cover that. All right, let's see. I'm gonna have this black six to cover this yellow five so I don't take as much damage. Um, I got a pink four for that, a pink five for that, a yellow four for this three, and all I need is a three over here and I've got it. All right, so I think I did all that right. So I don't take any damage, don't lose any time, which I don't wanna lose time because that would also make me take damage. So we're good there. This goblin's gonna be turned in for experience. So I've got two and three is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11 actually. But that's enough. I'll turn all that in. I'll go up to level four. And then level four gives me a new potion. And now I can roll two encounter dice in an encounter. And that's it. I'm going to descend. So I won't face them. This goes away. So now all these will go away. And so now we are at the dragon. Okay, so you may have seen it earlier, but let's look at the dragon. Uh, he six, I need six damage to beat him. Heroic dice cannot be placed on spots. This little skull represents, that's how you deal damage to him. You gotta, you gotta cover these three spots here to be able to deal damage, but you can't use the black dice to cover these. I have to have a six pink, a six blue, a six yellow. You see all this here, the 17, the 16. I have to have two fives uh, that are pink. Uh, the good news is my ability for armor does reduce some damage, so I can keep that in mind. I do have a potion, and this works just like regular combat. I'll have a start of turn. You don't spend any time, but I'll have a start of turn. I'll, I'll get my dice, roll it, and see what I can get. At the start of my turn, I will use this potion to heal her. Three, so I've taken two wounds, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine... Total hit points, I've got seven hit points I can work with here against the dragon. So let's see if I can do it. I get five yellow, and I even if I had heroic feet dice, I can't use them because the skull is marked out and that means you can't use heroic feats against the boss. So let's see, two, four, five yellow, uh, three pink, four blue, and I get two black now. This is the reason why I wanted to level up. One reason, because I get to roll one more die in the encounter, which I can use um, on these other spaces. You just can't use on the spaces with skulls. Okay, let's roll up. And I do have some skills to help me. And hopefully I can do this. The dragon can be tough. All right, it looks like I rolled good. I see a lot of sixes. Um, I see a blue six and a pink six. So, well, I need to have 
two pink fives. So I do have a pink six that I'll cover for there. I'm gonna use one of these black sixes to cover the other one. And now I'm gonna use a pink six that I rolled to cover this pink six so I can do some damage. And before I go any further, let's go ahead and use this blue three to cover, to spin it over here to be able to roll a heroic die. All right, so I got a two. Uh, that's not great. Let's, let's, um, let's spin this blue two that I have here over on this to get a blue five, okay? And then what I think I wanna do, I'm gonna spin this yellow one over here to increase up to four of my dice by one. I'm gonna increase this yellow four to a five, um, this blue five to a six. Uh, let's see, I'll do uh, a yellow two to a three. And I'll just go ahead and do this black two to a three. And the reason why I did that is because now I'm gonna use my Lucky Familiar to increase one of my die by one, which will be this five yellow to a six yellow. So I've used all of my skills except for the prevention of damage. But I think I'm okay. So um, for this blue 16, I'm gonna put the blue six, another blue six. So that's uh, 12. And then this black six, so we got 18 to cover that 16. So I think we're good there. Use the blue six to cover the blue six to deal damage, and the yellow six to cover this one to deal damage. And with the rest, I don't think I have enough. Pink isn't going to do me any good. I got three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't have enough to do anything else, but that's okay. I would take four damage, but remember, for every two damage you would lose, prevent one, and you can't prevent damage any other way. So I'm supposed to take four. I actually only take two, but the dragon. I covered all his spots, he's gonna take three. So I've, I've got him to half health and I still have uh, five hit points left because I've got nine total hit points and I've only taken four wounds. So I'd say that was a pretty good round. All right, so let's move everything off and set up, get set back up for a new round. Um, I roll five yellow, I roll three pink, uh, four blue and two black. So let's hope that I can defeat this on this turn. Okay. Um, I didn't roll well on the pink and that's not good because I have to have two five, two five pinks. So um, I think what I'll do is use the um, Lucky Familiar to turn this four pink into a five to cover that. And then I will use a yellow one over here to increase up to four of my dice by one each. So that's gonna be, um, I'll increase this black four to a five so that I can cover this. And then I'll increase a blue four to a five. And then a yellow four to a five and then I guess another yellow five to a six okay I think that's what I'll do um, I'm gonna spend the blue two and the black one to allow me to roll a heroic die and I get a six that's very good I could use that um, on one of these two big spots here and then well, before I do anything else, let's put this black five over the pink five. I have to have that. Okay, and then I'm gonna spend these two pink ones to get a black one. And then this three one and this one yellow, the three yellow and the one yellow to get another black one. I'm gonna spend those two over here on flame weave to get me a blue five. Okay, and so that's gonna give me six and five is 11, and five is 16 to cover up that. And then I wanna be able to deal some damage, so I'm gonna put the blue six here and the yellow six there. I won't be able to cover up anything else, that's all I can do. So I will take one, two, three, four, five, I'm supposed to take five damage, but I'll, I'll prevent, for every two I prevent one, so instead of taking five, I actually only take three 
And so let me get some more hit point uh, wounds out. So I'll take three. But let's say I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine health. And um, so I got two hit points left. He will take two hit points. So he's at five out of six. I'm at seven out of nine. But I'm still alive. I've got to be able to cover pretty much everything this time. I've got to I've got to roll a lot better than I did because I have no potions and I've only got two hit points left and you do the consequences before you do anything else. So I've got to be able to I'm, I'm close, but I've got to be able to win it here. So all right, five yellow dice and uh, three pink, four blue. Oh, I got those four blue and two black. That's what I get to roll, and I've really got to roll better than I did last time. I rolled terribly last time. So let's see what happens. And uh, I, get, uh, I mean, I guess it's okay. I got a blue six and a yellow six. That's good. Um, I don't see a pink six, but I only need one damage. And if I can cover everything, but if I have to leave this pink six empty, that's okay. I've got one hit point. So uh, let me think about what I want to do. All right, well, I've been thinking about it long and hard off camera, and I think I can pull this off with what I rolled, but just barely. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this black five to cover a pink five, because I can do that. I just can't cover black over here on the skulls. And then I'm going to take the six blue and, the and two of these fives. That's going to be 16. And they're going to cover the big long 16 spot. I'm going to take this two yellow, put it over here, increase up to four dice by one each. So this yellow four is going to go to a five. The yellow two is going to go to a three. And the three is going to go to a four. All right, and that's going to give me 11. And three is 14. And four is 18. So we'll put all those on the 17. So we got that covered. I still need a five green though. I have to cover that. So what I'm going to do is I'm turn in this three and this two for a black two and use the black two to get me a, uh, a blue five. And then uh, I need a pink five. So I'm going to turn in the two blue fives here for a black five, which will let me cover the pink five up here. So I got the two shields covered. This yellow six will go down here. I don't have anything to do with the pink. Um, I could re-roll it, but I've got enough. Now I'm going to take two damage, but remember for every two damage I lose, prevent one. So I'm only going to take one damage from him. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. But I have five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got one hit point left. He takes a hit point and goes up to six. And that's it. I barely defeat the, the dragon. He if I didn't make any big mistakes, I defeated him. If I made big mistakes, I'm sorry, but I'm going to count it as a win. I think I got everything right. But he's got six damage and loses. I've got eight out of nine. So that's the reason why I wanted to get all these hit points because that was en just enough. To defeat him and so what I would do now is I would go to um, to the the sheet and it tells you ways that you can level up check marks you get for completing different things I would score experience points as you see I would get three check marks for defeating the boss and uh, from what I can tell what I, from what I did I would get about 10 check marks I could fill them in here to get abilities and then uh, I defeated the dragon so I would move on to the Yeti who is next and uh, but if you lose to the dragon, you can always re you can still get your experience points and get a, a, a level up and and make them stronger and go back and fight the dragon again because it says in the rules to see if you can beat the campaign in as few as plays as possible. So you want to try to beat all five of the bosses uh, in five plays, but it might take longer if you lose. Like if I would have lost to the dragon, I could go back and play it again. All right, well, let's, let me give you my final thoughts on the game. All right, so there you have it. There is 
one deck dungeon. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the playthrough and you liked it, what you saw. And if you did, maybe it's a game you can consider buying. Uh, as one of the things you saw in the playthrough, uh, I do recommend playing the game, especially for new players. Uh, I recommend playing on campaign mode. It's, it's the most fun that I've had anyway. And uh, it's actually the, the easiest way to get into the game and learn it. You can play each one of the bosses just by themselves, standalone. But the game is more difficult if you play that way. But if you play with the campaign, you can get benefits and upgrades and stuff that can help you against the bosses. So it makes it a little bit easier to play the game. It's still a challenging game now. It is a it is qu a, quite a difficult game, and that is something to keep in mind. But I think uh, difficulty is good for a cooperative game like One Deck Dungeon because it helps with replayability. You know, if you win a game on your first try and it felt easy, you're, not, you're less likely to go back to it as you are to a game where uh, the first game was challenging and you lose, but you felt like you had a chance to win. So naturally you're gonna to wanna to go back and play it again and try to beat it. So I think it, it, it's a good thing that this game is, is challenging, uh, but that is something to keep in mind uh, before you buy it. But you know, I still think it's a good game to, to purchase and to give to someone that you care about that you think might like it. And for what's important for the video, here's a, a stocking, okay? Uh, I guess about a regular size stocking. And the question is, does One Deck Dungeon fit into the stocking? Well, yes, it does. There it is right there. It fits into this size stocking. And so it fits the bill for what this video is about. It is a stocking stuffer, something you can put in. And there's still plenty of room in this size stocking anyway. Plenty of room for candy or whatever else you want to put into your stocking. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider to like and subscribe and be sure to hit the notification bell because I will have some other games coming up in this series of five stocking stuffers for Christmas. So be sure to hit that notification bell so you'll know when those games are coming out or when any of the other playthroughs I have, uh, when they come out. And until the next time, I'll save you a seat at the table. Goodbye.